Well, hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today, I'm going to share with you what Joan and I use for both internet and video entertainment. Well, hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. And I don't know about you, but when Joan and I are out on the road, we are gone sometimes for six, seven, eight months out of the year. And uh, I know some of you that are watching this channel full time, and some of you just might go out for just a couple of weeks, you know, for vacation. But regardless, when you do hit the road, um, you know, sometimes you want some entertainment. Some campgrounds will provide cable, some don't. Uh, some campgrounds, you might be able to get off air antenna service. <laughs> and we've been to a bunch that don't, they just don't have anything. Just happens sometimes. So we use, there's several things that we use that uh, gives us entertainment both from the internet um, as well as using DISH satellite service. And there's DirecTV, but there's a specific reason that we use uh, DISH service. First of all, let me talk about internet. Uh, there is quite a challenge when you're using the internet for any of your entertainment, whether you know, you're watching uh, your Android pad or an iPad, or you're trying to use something like uh, an Apple TV, or in Joan in my instance, we use a Fire Stick. And um, you may be able to use the campground internet, but more than likely you're not for a couple reasons. One, it's just oversaturated. Uh, second, the campground provider really didn't put that internet there for you to be able to watch Netflix or Prime Video or even YouTube for that instance. It's more you know, doing some Facebook or email or those types of things. And it's just not a lot of bandwidth there. And second for us, um, I have to have high speed internet for my business. We take our business on the road. I think I've shared this in other videos. We have a company called Making Web Designs and I do a lot of internet video production for clients as well as web design, graphic art and that type of stuff. So I need really good, strong, high bandwidth, reliable internet because I might be working for a couple hours one morning or I might be working, if it's a peak and a lot of stuff going on, I might be working eight or 10 hours that day. Then we go out and have some fun. <laughs> but one of the greatest things that's just happened here recently is Verizon came out with a pay-as-you-go plan unlimited. Um, I don't know how long this is going to last. You know, sometimes these things kind of come and go. We ran into that with a service called AT&T Mobley, which I use. Um, and now that's been capped and you can't get the unlimited service any longer. And this is a pay-per-view or, or pay, not a pay-per-view, but a pay-as-you-go plan. Um, so um, it's $70 for unlimited, true unlimited. Um, and if you do the prepay option where you give your credit card, uh, you can get it for $65. Uh, and that's what Joan and I do. And really the service has been fantastic. Uh, we've been using it for a couple months now. I've not seen any caps in it. My understand there's a tiering arrangement within Verizon, such as emergency services get first priority, then your regular pay service, not your prepay, gets the second priority, and then your prepay service such as this and phones and so forth get third priority. But I've been seeing uh, download bandwidths uh, and everywhere that we've traveled here recently from six megabits to about 20 megabits. Plenty, plenty fine for being able to watch YouTube videos on your pad, your phone, those types of things. Uh, we use it in the car as or the truck as we drive down the road and we use it for our music entertainment and Jones checking Facebook and all that type of stuff. It's really a, a great little product. This is the uh, 6620L. This is an older style um, jet pack. It's got good bandwidth. Uh, I think with the plan, a lot of times you can kind of go in, they'll even toss in a cheap one uh, for free. Sometimes you can kind of negotiate that, but it's, it's not a very good unit. You can still buy these things like crazy and there's some better units that you can buy as well um, that get on up at a little bit more pricey that have some better bandwidth. But this old 6620L serves me super, super well and I have no problem with it at all. Works great for the Fire Stick. Here, let me show you how this thing works with Fire Stick. I'm using it now. And here we go. And you see it just pops right on up. Um, I'm going to go down here and do just some prime video just to see how it works. 
and um, oh, I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff on right now. Uh, how about It's a Wonderful Life? And uh, we'll just watch that right now. Tis the season, you know. Look at that. So it literally pops up uh, within seconds. So I don't get a copyright strike here. I'll stop it. But uh, this, I think I've got two or three bars. Uh, I don't even really have a, you know, really strong service where we're at here right now. But, uh, it, you know, it just absolutely works great. So that's one way that we use this to be able to get our entertainment. Um, again, we were in uh, New Iberia, Louisiana one time, and we had a campground that we were at there. And I was getting 100 megabits of service there. It was just absolutely incredible. There was not a lot of people in the campground at the time. That thing just absolutely rocked. And we could do just virtually anything with that internet. Um, and it worked super, super fast. But most times, most times you're going to have to use some type of a hotspot. Again, if you're out there on the road a lot, months and months at a time, the $65 probably makes um, an economic sense for you to be able to use something like that to have good, reliable bandwidth. There's very few places that we have been, and I'm talking about, I can probably count on two or three fingers that we have not had good Verizon service, and we've been very, very pleased with that. So that's one option of being able to use the internet and Fire Stick or Apple TV for that matter to be able to get your video entertainment. Now let me show you the other thing that we use. Uh, the next item I want to show you that we use, we use Dish Network. Uh, we use this for a couple reasons. One, it is a great value. It's very inexpensive. We use uh, the Wally Receiver. I'll show you that. This is uh, the Wally Receiver here. This is a single tuner receiver. The Wally is a very inexpensive and a very reliable unit. It behaves very well. We never have any software issues in it. It just really works like a champ. It is a single tuner system. So it's not one of these like um, one of the hopper systems that you may have at home to where you can do multiple channels with it or multiple tuners with it while you're DVRing one or two things and then watching another. Uh, that doesn't work. This also supports DVR service. We have a hard drive, uh, a, a Seagate hard drive that we plug into this. So like if you're out traveling about and doing some things and you want to catch something while you're out for dinner that night, um, then you can hit record and be able to catch it. But the thing that I enjoy most is I'm a college football nut and I love to watch college football. Having that ability to pause, rewind, play back a specific play is really, really great. And I mean, enjoy that. Or, you know, you're sitting here watching it and somebody calls you on the phone, you can hit a pause and uh, have that conversation on the phone, then hit play back again and it works like a champ. $40 one time fee, no other fee to be able to get DVR other than the purchase of your hard drive and that's about 70 or 80 dollars so really when you're looking at a receiver and if you want dvr you're about 150 bucks or so into buying this receiver one-time fee now the other thing we use is the pay-as-you-go plan so they've got a basic plan that you can buy into that's about 40 or 50 channels um, and that costs 39 bucks a month and uh, that's got all the major channels that we want the second thing that we do is Let's say that uh, we want to be able to watch uh, college football for the season and we need ESPN and our regional sports network for that. Let's say the SEC network because we want to see SEC football. You can buy that for however long in a 10 to $12 range per package. Um, and then at the end of the football season, I turn it off. I don't need it again. So that saves me about 20 to $22 a month for the rest of the season, really a good value. So. Mostly what I'm into is just, you know, something under $40 for my programming and we get everything that we want, the home and gardens and, you know, a news channel and um, history channel and, you know, all the, you know, DIY, all the types of things that you typically want to be able to watch. Uh, and it, it does a good job for that. So, you know, this is our home. You know, we're gone six, seven, eight months out of the year. I've had people say, Jerry, why do you want to watch TV when you're out camping? Well, we really don't look at it as camping. We really look at it as touring. And we're out there touring about, and then we come home. Our home just happens to have wheels for those months that we're out on the road. And we want to be able to have both news entertainment and other types of entertainment to be able to do that. So we use the Wally receiver. Now, what do we use for an antenna? For the longest time, I used the physical dish on a tripod. You know, if I was probably going to stay in some place for three months, four months, five months at a time, that would be an ideal situation to be able to use. It's not 
easy to sit up. As a matter of fact, it is a pain in the backside to sit up a physical dish. Um, you know, these satellites are miles and miles up in the air and um, you're, you've got a dish that's about this big and you're using a small pinpoint that you're trying to be able to see something that is absolutely invisible in the sky and you're using a compass and there's various other tools to be able to set it up. You know, I finally got to the point sometimes I could set that thing up and hit that antenna in maybe 30 minutes or hit the uh, satellite in about 30 minutes and there, there were other times it was just an absolute nightmare. It would go hours and hours and hours. No rhyme or reason, just, you know, sometimes my satellite ducks just didn't get in a row. So I went and bought a WineGuard X2. Um, why the WineGuard X2? Uh, a couple reasons. First of all, uh, it can hit either the east or the western arc of TV programming that satellite that the DISH satellite offers. They actually have satellites offering programming, the full suite of programming, and uh, two different hemispheres of the Earth. And uh, why is that important? Well, if you go to a campground, let's say we're at a Corps of Engineer Park, and we might have some trees that's in the way of our western view, but we can see the eastern, or vice versa. Uh, I can set the uh, TV up to be able to see, uh, to, uh, see those satellites super quick and super easy. I'm going to do kind of not really a time lapse, but I'm going to cut some of the time out, but I will share this with you. It takes roughly 19 minutes to set up your dish to be able to get everything going. That is from roughly setting the X2 in place, uh, getting it level, hooking it up to the cable, that, and we have a specific satellite jack on the camper that goes directly up to the Wally here. You have to have that. You can't run this through your typical antenna system. Um, the uh, antenna amplifier will not allow you to be able to run your satellite through that system. So you need a direct input to your satellite. And um, I set that X2 down. You'll see me come in here and set it up and it will find the, th the three satellites that we'll be watching our programming on. It will download the guide and we'll have TV here in literally 19 minutes. It's pretty amazing. Let's go outside and I'll show you how simple it is to set this thing up. You'll see that there's uh, really not a whole lot to this. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is they make a stand here for the X2. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple, there's not a whole lot to it. One of the reasons you wanna use a stand is uh, just to keep dirt and sand out of it when it rains. You don't want it splashing up into the mechanism because that dish actually rotates to be able to get set. Uh, set. So there's not a whole lot to this. You want your platform to be level. And that's the nice thing about having these legs. You can, you know, pop them out and get this thing nice and level. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, just close. There we go. This is the X2. It has these uh, rubber feet that are down on the bottom of it that you can use to lock it in. Next, you'll see the back of it has a main and a secondary. This will actually support two receivers, uh, a primary and a secondary. And you hook the cable up here. And we're ready to go set it up. And now I'm going to turn the TV on and we're gonna set up the satellite. And this just takes no time at all. So the Wally pops on once you get the power turned on to it. And this takes just a few seconds. Once this pops up, you'll see how many receivers I've got. I've got one receiver. Um, here's the mode that I was sharing with you. You can set it up for the eastern arc or the western arc. And we're going to set it up for the eastern arc. Uh, we are located in Georgia, so you can literally go here and see all the different states that you're in. And um, 
we'll just go ahead and set it up while we're here in Georgia. And then we do a scan and off we go. So this is the uh, satellite dish itself. This is the pathway, the WineGuard Pathway X2. And it's actually rotating now looking for the satellites that are up in the sky. And we're on that eastern arc and it just found one of them. And now it's going to kind of fine tune. Uh, as you notice inside, it's been going through something called a switch check. Um, and this is actually pretty fine. You're actually seeing, if you'll notice here, it's got a, an elevation mark to where, you know, it's, it's tuning, getting closer and closer to uh, finding the arc that's up in the sky. And there's literally nothing for you to do except just wait while this whole automation, automated process works here. So this is a, a newer software that's uh, in the Wally that's been downloaded here not too long ago. And um, the presentation's a little bit different than what we've seen in the past. It's a, it's a little cleaner. And uh, this is actually the first time that I've used this software. And now we've had a, a state change. Let's say that it's uh, picking up the signal. And uh, if I look outside, the um, X2 has stopped moving, and you'll notice there's a progress bar at the bottom. So as it's moving forward and finding the things that it's supposed to find, you'll uh, see that progress bar actually change, and it moves every few seconds as it completes the setup process of acquiring the signal. There we go. Now once the signal is found, um, it's going to start downloading the guide. I know that it says it takes no more than 10 minutes. It, it's never taken 10 minutes for us, um, usually four or five minutes uh, maximum. And again, it'll sit here for just a second. There's nothing that you can do uh, during this period. There's no way to speed it up. Um, just have to kind of let it go through this process and you'll get a progress bar down at the bottom. It's actually clipping along pretty good once it kind of gets that signal acquired. Usually while I'm setting the satellite dish up, I've got kind of a routine. I pull the camper in, I get it level, I get it set. Then I put in the uh, water and the electricity so Joan can start setting things up inside the camper. And then I set the dish up and go ahead and get that started and let it be setting up. I do the sewer hose at that point in time. Uh, if we're in a sandy area or an area that's got a lot of dirt, we're not in a paved location, I'll put out our carpet and our chairs and kind of get that area set up. By the time I get that, usually when I walk back in the door, the satellite dish is completely set up. So we're getting close to having the guide finished and you're going to see this thing pop just like that. And we're at this stage probably, oh, we're getting close to being done. We're probably about 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes in the setup. Boom, that's it. So that's it. Uh, for some reason it came up on QVC, but uh, I'll go ahead and hit the guide here. I'll turn the sound down. And you can actually see all the different things that are going on here. Um, again, I'll be kind of careful with what I go to. There's a how about C-SPAN? That should be pretty safe. Uh, there's uh, public affairs events on C-SPAN. The dish is actually moving and changing its direction so that it can show something like that. And uh, so there's C-SPAN. The other thing that's nice when you have it, you can literally program your TV and uh, remote to the, the remote to turn it off and on and it makes it really simple. It's really, really nice. Joan and I really do enjoy having the ability to be able to have direct TV when we're out on the road. So there's a couple other devices if the X2 is too expensive for you, and I, and I understand it is the higher end of the portable units. The reason that we bought that again, so we can have East and West Arc. Uh, also, it has the largest dish and these family of portable dishes, not the ones that you, you see mounted up on top of the roofs of RVs. But uh, this is the uh, largest dish that you can find, at least currently, uh, in this family of portable dishes. And I can stick it out, you know, 50 feet, 60 feet, 70 feet, 
uh, to be able to find a nice clean spot. You'll notice it did have a handle on it. I've got a chain and a padlock. I will lock it down just to make sure it doesn't walk off. <laughs> That's kind of nice to be able to have that. It is not inexpensive. The other thing I'll say about the wine guard is, you know, if you're not needing an immediate purchase, if you'll kind of watch the Amazons and the camping worlds and those types of things, uh, once in a while you can find them at $100 off. It doesn't happen very often, but uh, some of the times that does pop up. But there are lower price units that you can buy out there. Uh, Dish makes one called a Playmaker, um, and those things go for about $250. Uh, it does have a smaller dish in it, and you will suffer from rain fade quite a bit more. But if that doesn't uh, bother you and you don't mind um, you're not having it as much during the, the rains, then, um, then that's definitely an option. Uh, there are a couple uh, made by uh, King called the Tailgate. Um, and those run, uh, it just depends on what you're looking at, but they're in about the mid 300 range. And that X2 can get over $400. But again, two satellite arcs, uh, there's the benefit of that, and then just the big dish as well. And they all sit up in about the same time frame, in about the you know 19 to 20 minute range. So that's how we use uh, both the internet and the satellite for our entertainment. Um, we're talking minutes. If we're doing the satellite, it's just turn on the cellular modem, push the button, and just watch TV. And it's really, really nice for that. And if we're using a satellite, um, then you can uh, buy one of these portable dishes and then a Wally for 70 something dollars and you're up and going and just can just have a blast of being able to use this thing at a very reasonable price. Uh, one other thing let me share about the uh, Dish Network as well. You can also get locals and if you buy this as your traveler package or your RV package, um, all you've got to do is go into your My Dish app and say, I'm in this zip code and hit the button and boom, the locals will come in for that area. So let's say we've left Georgia. We're going to do an out west trip. We pull into Dallas. I can put in the zip code for Dallas. Bang, I've got Dal Dallas. Uh, a couple days later, we're in Tucson. I put in Tucson. Boom, I've got the locals for Tucson. And no matter where you move in the United States, you can put in that zip code. And if they support that area with well, locals, from somewhere, they call that a direct marketing area. If they provide those, boom, you can get the locals as well. And I think locals will run $12 on this as well. So anyway, good, another good value of being able to turn those on or turn those off whenever you don't need them, okay? So there you have it, internet and dish entertainment services when Joan and I are on the road. It's just another reason we just love RV life.